All right, welcome to part two of the Grab Chess Club's lecture. Um, this is Gerald Roberts versus Matt Leach. All right, Black's last move was Queen B4, and I followed it up with Queen E4 with the idea of doubling up on the E file, um, controlling D5 uh, with the Queen and the Rook. Um, and let's see how he progresses. He goes Queen B4, and I don't see any reason to not take here. I'm going to weaken his pawn structure. I still have the two powerful center pawns, so I follow it out. And then here I come up with a move that I like very much. Um, and I play E6. Um, the idea of E6 is to make my pawns attacking pieces. Say if he ignores them, well he can't really ignore them. Um, let's say he takes, takes on F6. If he takes on F6, then I can play bishop takes c7 um, and then say he tries uh, rook takes d5 rook takes and we end up with something like this um, I'm either going to win his d5 pawn or his b4 pawn um, and then materials equal and I think my pieces are better I think my bishop's going to be definitely better in the end game so I don't think that would have worked out for him very well so on e6 um, there's also a discovered attack on his c7 pawn, and that's what he sees. So he defends the pawn, and now I play one of my favorite moves that I've ever played in a, in a chess game. Um, and I play bishop takes c7. The point is that if rook takes, um, I have um, this move here, uh, and then these pawns are just going to be crushing. Uh, say if he moves back, he's, uh, he's going to get killed. The only move that the computer can find computer move it's rook c3 and then after something like this he's still gonna have to give me the piece back so my piece sacrifice is definitely sound and then we end up with something like this and I think that I'm better here um, I'm pretty sure so it's a nice little tactic he can't take on c7 so instead he takes on e6 and then now he is threatening to take my piece. Oh, that's not what I do. I had to defend my, my bishop. So. Oh. Okay. Uh, and then he plays the only move that's on the board that can help him stop my pawn. Uh, that's knight f4. And then after rook d4, knight d5, now he can play... Um, now I play rook takes e6 and then he does get my bishop and my passed pawn but I'm a pawn up so I've got something concrete so rook c1 um, and now he has the idea of doubling up on the seventh rank which was the second rank technically and he thinks that his attack is going to be a little faster than mine um, because he's, he maybe I'll be afraid of him taking on g2 or, or something. I'm not sure exactly what the idea was, but a few moves before this, I had calculated everything out, and I knew that my attack was going to come before his. So, he continues with his idea of rook c to c2, attacking both the a pawn and the g pawn, which would be a lot of trouble, except that I have this nice move, rook e8 check. And then after he makes the only move that there is, rook f8, I can drop it back and now there's no way for him to defend the g7 pawn and he can't say play anything like this because I can play check and mate so there's no way for him to defend that pawn so instead he doubles up on the c file uh, and now I can take it and then now he's got to be careful because say if he tries to like get another pawn. Um, now I have mate in one. So there's a lot of little tricks he's going to have to watch for. He has, he has to play very carefully and to credit him he does. He, he plays very carefully. Um, doesn't make it easy for me. So I go a4. Um, I'm already three pawns up. I'm going to just try to queen one of them. Win the easiest game that I know how. Uh, a5. Rook a7 attacking the pawn. Uh, rook b2, I can't take his a pawn yet because his king is attacking my rook. So bring it over, and I also defend my pawn, a very multi-purpose move. Um, he moves his king, and now I can take the pawn. Um, and again, he can't move his rook on c8 anywhere, because then I'll just follow it up with rook a8 check with mate in one after that. So he goes rook d8, just keeping it on the back rank. Now I just double up again, king g8, 
and now I'm just bringing my pawn up. And now I offer to trade rooks. Um, the point of offering to trade rooks is that if he trades, um, yeah, he's going to win my b3 pawn, and maybe eventually even win my, my other pawn, but I'm going to be two pawns up, at least. Uh, and I'm not going to lose that endgame, um, so I just want to simplify down to to a better endgame. But he realizes that he doesn't want to do that, so he plays rook a8, and now rook a7, a very nice move. He does get my pawn on b3, but after rook b7, um, he plays rook a3, and now I follow up with rook f to c7. The point is, now I'm threatening rook b8 check, uh, either going to trade rooks and get a queen and mate him, or... Um, He's going to have to do something to stop it. So, uh, to just to show you what I mean, uh, say if he goes, let's say play pass. Um, now I can play check, takes, mate. So, he has to be very careful here. Um, and what he decides to do is he decides that he's going to have to take that pawn. So, take, take, now I'm a rook and two pawns up. You think it's be the simplest thing in the world. So, Rook day four. I want to get his rook at all costs. So now I'm going to double up and say if he passes again and plays like king g8. Um, now I'm going to play uh, rook c8, uh, and then I'm going to trade rooks. And I'm going to be a rook and two pawns up. I'm going to win that endgame. It's <laughs> that simple. So instead he plays rook e2, trying to make it difficult for me. And now I just run this h pawn up. And he's going to the corner. H6 and now he plays rook d2 now i didn't really see the point of rook d2 i thought that i had mate very soon and um, one thing in chess is you always have to be aware of, of what your opponent's plans are and here i was just overconfident and um, i played a stupid move i played h7 uh... what i should have done is something like rook e4 and then it's mate in five i hadn't seen this type of mate before um, the point is i have to use that pawn on h6 as protector of one of my rooks. So just to see how something like that would work, um, let's say let's say he runs the king. No, no, no. That's mate in one. Let's say he brings the rook back, and then rook here, rook g seven. now it's mate. The point is that this pawn on h6 defends that rook. That was the way to do it. So, turns out right here I had mate in 5. Starting with either rook e4 or rook b4. And I didn't see it. Instead I played h7, just continuing with my plan and ramming that pawn in his face. And I was very sad to see this next move. Rook takes g2 check. And the game is over. It's a draw. I can't take the rook because in the stalemate he can't move at all. Um, and I can't run away. Say if I run away he can just keep running at me. I can't go anywhere. Because if I ever take his rook he's gonna, it's, it's a draw. Um, and he can run me all over board. I actually ended up playing like 30, 40 moves after this just to, just, I was just in disbelief. Um, but eventually I resigned. So, it was a very nice move by him at the end, a uh, way to hold on. Um, it ended up I lost on tie breaks uh, for the tournament, so he finished ahead of me. I got the second place trophy, which is uh, a nice way for me to learn my lesson. So, I hope you enjoyed this lecture. Um, maybe you'll start playing the Roy Lopez Exchange. Um, there's some nice ideas to it. Um, and never underestimate your opponents. Um, always play smart through the whole game. Alright, that's it for this time.